The truth the girls. Hi everyone. A little while ago I posted this video. Reddit co-founder Aaron Swartz suicided. And I was talking about Aaron Swartz, who was the co-founder of Reddit and the co-creator of the RSS feed, who um, killed himself before he was supposed to go to court where he was facing charges for having, well, as they said, stolen uh, thousands of scientific articles which he was posting on the internet so people could have free access to them. And the article uh, for that was here. Reddit co-founder Aaron Swartz's family blames prosecutors for suicide. His death was a little strange, but I think there's a good chance that um, he really did just kill himself. Because they were going to hit him with a really, really heavy penalty, like 30 years in jail. Well, anyhow, since his death, a U.S. government site has been hacked to avenge this internet activist. Anonymous is getting revenge, and they hacked the uh, U.S. Sentencing Commission's website. Not once. But twice, they rehacked it again just recently and turned it into a video game, Asteroids. And they put up this video, Anonymous Operation Last Resort, explaining why they did this. And basically, what they said was that it's like the government is targeting people like Aaron Swartz, that they're, they're subjecting them to cruel and unusual punishment. Like Aaron Swartz was taking these scientific articles that normally you have to pay big bucks to access them. It could be like $25 per article um, for a scientific journal, for recent articles, not older ones. And so he just said, well, you know, this should be available to the public. I guess he put it there. And, um, you know, these, these companies don't want people getting their stuff for free. And, and so, and the government serves these corporations. So when they, they catch somebody like this and they want to penalize him, they're going to really make an example of him, as he would say. And, and like Anonymous said, this is basically cruel and unusual punishment. And what they said in this video was that they, they had a, a nuclear warhead that, that they would, you know, release. But they're, they're speaking metaphorically. What, what, they, what they have is they've got information. They've hacked into the site and they have all kinds of information that would be very compromising. I think they said the Department of, of Justice. Or did they say also Department of Defense? Sorry, I'm in a rush and I, I can't check again. But anyway, the government, they've hacked into their stuff and uh, they've, got, they've got some information in there that if it got out, as Anonymous said, there would be some collateral damage. Is it, is it scary that Anonymous is hacking government websites I and mean, what, what are they going to do? You know, is this just going to create havoc? Are they going to do a lot of damage? I, 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 don't, I don't think so. I think uh, so far, they, what, all they've done is they've exposed the damage that the government's been doing. And here's one last article I'd like you to see. This is from Prison Planet. Hacked emails reveal Washington approved plan to stage chemical weapons attack in Syria. Wow, they, they found emails that showed that the, the U.S. government was planning a false flag in Syria to make it look like Assad's regime was using chemical weapons. And um, there's all kinds of uh, evidence that, that backs it up. Well, they mentioned here, uh, U.S.-backed rebel fighters in Syria had been given gas masks and were willing to stage a chemical weapons attack, so said a report. And a source told Syrian News that a Saudi company had fitted 1,400 ambulance vehicles with anti-gas and anti-chemical filtering systems at a cost of $97,000 each in preparation for a chemical weapons attack carried out by FSA rebels using mortar rounds. You know, it's like they had done all kinds of things that show that there was a lot of uh, hype and preparations about uh, chemical weapons attacks, and, and now this comes out and... Um, it looks like that's what they were doing with staging a false flag. You know what I think? I think that there's not really such a thing as terrorists and there's really no reason to be in war and there's not really any kind of threat. I think it's just um, the, the, you know, the governments, they, they go and hire former Al-Qaeda members to go and fight, fight the war on terror. Like they just create all this stuff. They just go in there, they arm rebels or they they do all kinds of stuff to overthrow governments like they did in Libya because he was going against the new world order you want to have a gold-backed currency and green the desert you're dead they do that 
everywhere that they did, they just want to get rid of people who get in their way, basically. So there, there's no, there would be no reason for war if they didn't keep going in there and creating these situations. And that's what they were going to do in Syria. So as far as anonymous exposing this goes, well, I say, you know, good for them. Is that wrong of me? Am I like supporting terrorists now? I think it's good that they that they did that, that they exposed it. Somebody's got to do it. The government's not going to do it. You know what they do with whistleblowers? They silence them. They had passed all kinds of laws to make it harder for people to whistleblow. And even at the FDA, they do stuff like whistleblowing employees. They get harassed. They get their emails read. They get tracked. And all these things that were put in place for safety are then used against whistleblowers. I mean, the system is completely rotten. The government has a lot of secrets, you know. You know, anonymous and hackers like that, when they do this kind of stuff, they expose all this corruption in the government. So, are anonymous a bunch of terrorists, or are they really like vigilante justice, Robin Hooding? But what do you think? Let me know what you think. And thanks for listening to me. And I'll see you next time.